Hello everyone, uh, today's video is going to be very important because we have the two founding members of Coracle with us here, uh, Semi and Matthias. So let's talk with Matthias first. Matthias, hello, how are you? Uh, I'm fine. Matthias, let's give us a little bit uh, introduction of yourself. Hey, I'm, I'm uh, Ray in Hamburg. I am from, from Hamburg, gone in Hamburg. And, uh, I'm in the church field past 25 Yes, yeah. In 2015, we created uh, Coracle, and uh, in the middle, we can talk to you more about that. Great. Uh, the second founding members we have with us today is Semi. So, Semi, just give us a brief introduction about yourself. Um, hi, welcome to our office. Ah, thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so, my name is Sami. Uh, I came to Germany in 2004. For my master's studies, um, so I studied my master's in the TU Hamburg. And um, yeah, it's my almost 20th year in Hamburg, so I've been part Hamburger now. And um, so I yeah, worked um, 10 plus years in different corporate companies before we created Coragal. Um, yeah, together with Matthias. Great. Uh, I think it's a nice weather outside today. Uh, I would really like to go out. Uh, we will not take you more time, so you probably have a lot to do. And I think Semi. And let's go out. Yeah, yeah let's go out. Warm video. Yeah, let's go out and continue this video. What is Coracle and what are the main services? So we are building rockets. <laughs> no. <laughs> so Coracle is a it's a full uh, full full digital service platform. We are based in Hamburg. And right now we are offering the services for international students coming to Germany. Um, so when an international student apply for German visa, so they need a blocked account and they need a travel insurance and to start a study, they need a health insurance. Yep. So this is what we are offering. So we're offering the blocked account, health insurance and travel insurance services. What was the main goal? Why did you start this company? Um, yeah, so to start with, uh, if you allow me, um, so we want to go a little bit back in history. Yep. So um, I came to Germany also as a student for my master's studies, studies at the TU Hamburg. That was um, almost 20 years back. So in 2004, I came here and I did my master's. And I was working for different European companies for around 10, 10 plus years. Yeah. And at the end of my this corporate um, career, um, I wanted to do something on my own. And then one day I met some students from TU Hamburg. Of course, I still live in Hamburg. And they had some issues with the health insurance. Oh. And uh, they signed up a wrong health insurance and they waived off their rights to go to a hospital. So the hospital was not paying them. So there were some issues around that. And they reached out to me as a senior and I reached out to my friend, now the co-founder, so Matthias, who is a German, and he is the financial expert and insurance expert. Okay. And then we solved the problem and then I thought, okay, this is something, this is still unclear yeah. and students are suffering. And that's where we started to offer a solution. The first solution was uh, health insurance. So students can read the information in English, select different health insurances online. And that's how it started. And then we built the travel insurance and then we built the blocked account and then kind of like going like that. Yeah, great. Nice story. So <laughs> uh, how how Curricul is different from the other service providers in the industry? What is the main thing which you can say we have this and others don't. So before we go into the difference, um, I think at one line, we are all the same. In the sense, um, so we are offering the same service, like, you know, we blocked account, health insurance, travel insurance. So it's all same at that level. And then I think from that platform, we are all differ to each other because we understand how the mindset of a student, you know, it doesn't matter if it is from Pakistan or from Mexico, young people going to Germany, they're always under this pressure and stress and the parents as well. So for us, the core focus was to give the transparent information and be there for our customers. So mainly the customer support. Customer support. Yeah, uh, I have also heard about the support of the curriculum. Uh, if you have seen my previous video, we also discussed a little bit about the support of Curricul, uh, how one of my friends, he got benefit from the support. So coming on to this support question. I mean, a lot of uh, students who are uh, doing this process and they are opening a blog account, uh, they face a lot of difficulties and they want to talk to any representative. So 
how is the support in Coracle works? I mean, which channels a student or a user can use to reach out to Coracle and what is the average time which uh, a support a guy from a Coracle response? Mm -hmm. So we are trying to um, answer all the queries on the same day, which we still try to maintain. There are some exceptions where it's a complicated case. Um, so the response time um, right now averages between an hour and 10, 12 hours, oh, let's that, say. That's, 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 that's fast. Yeah, that's fast. it's really fast. This is where we are like proud of ourselves. And that also reflects in our reviews. If you look at outside, you know, comparing us and the, uh, our other companies, so we maintain 4.9 in Trustpilot, which is a rating platform, yep. and in Google as well, um, closing 1,500-ish reviews now, and that's not easy to maintain 4.9. You you really need to excel in what we do. So um, yeah, this is the email is the primary uh, inflow of requests that we get from, and of course, when students they are in Germany, then they also call us because calling from uh, Pakistan, for example, or from other countries, it's expensive. So it's usually email or once they're here and then um, they call us. And for Pakistan community, so we, as most of uh, the viewers might know, you have a strong Facebook community where really people helping each other. Yep. This is something really special because we know what's happening in the other markets as well. You know, either the communities are commercially skewed because the admin is one or two person, so they have some commercial interest in it. But the communities, couple of communities we have in Pakistan is very special. There we see our customers helping each other. That's an unpaid customer support we have there. You know, so this is the, the best thing can happen to any company because our customers are happily helping the other customers. And besides that, we also have our country representative, like Akash Tasham, who is our current representative, very active in those communities. Um, so he's there supporting customers um, also in Urdu because English is not none of our native language, right? So, um, and um, some of us are very good at it. Some of us are struggle with it. And whereas it involves money and new things, sometimes it's just easy to talk to someone in the native language. This is what something we offer that's more regional. And through this, we also feel the customers are feel, they feel more safer and comfortable. Yep. Uh, great, great point. Uh, the group which the community which Sammy talked about is it's a Facebook group. We all took help from it. I just want to mention uh, the name of the group. It's Study and Life in Germany uh, for Pakistani students. It's a great platform. If you are not part of the group, do join it. It has a lot of information. One question which I get uh, repeatedly is uh, if a student visa of uh, a person gets rejected. So for example, I'm applying for the Germany. Uh, I have opened a block account with Coracle. I have uh, submitted uh, the block account, uh, the block amount in the block account. And now if my visa gets rejected, I cannot come to the Germany. So what happens with my amount? Do I get a full refund or there are deductions? And what's the procedure for that? Yeah. Um, so in general, once the visa gets rejected, you don't need to have the money stuck in the blocked account, right? So you get it back. Um, for that, um, so a student requests the consulate or the embassy. So there is something called Sperr Freigabe in German. It's like a release letter. So they say, hey, look, my visa is rejected. I want the money back. Please confirm. So they give this statement. You know, sometimes they reply via email or they give a formal letter mentioning, please release the money. And then the students send it to us. And then we process the payment and it takes like a week or two. So they get the money back. So they get the money back uh, to the same account from which they sent. Yes, exactly. Because of the Anti-Money Laundering Act and so on and so on. Okay. But one thing is very important to mention here, which also differentiates us from the others. And if a visa gets rejected, so we not only pay the blocked amount, we pay also the fee they paid us. Okay, you pay. We pay. Bank. We pay everything. The processing charges we take on our side, because the students are in not their best moment in their life, and we personally feel we, in the sense like me and Matthias, the management, we don't think that's right to add salt into the wound. So th we cannot do anything. The only thing what we can do is, is we we give their fee back, 
and that's what we are doing as well. That's that's a great gesture. I did not know about it before. Semi just told me. I mean, let's suppose my visa gets accepted. I I got a student visa. Now I have come to Germany. And what steps do I need to unblock my account? What documents does Coracle need to release my uh, amount monthly? Okay. So um, so you have the blocked account. and where we have this 10000 11000 euros block you don't have access to that so we give this 900 euros or 950 euros from this to you and to receive this you need a local account yeah this is what so here in germany we call the current account we've been different countries it's basically a personal savings account we call it um back home so you open this account and you can open this in any bank so normally there are banks laying like like located close to the university so many banks out there which is offering these accounts for free so we tell our customers you know what you come here and you decide based on where you are in hamburg maybe a sparkas is the best option in dresden maybe a commerce bank which is next to the university for example so once they open this account they send us a proof hey this is my account account details and that's it oh okay and then the person starts getting money monthly into his local Account. account exactly and the process takes 2 3 days so now shifting our focus from block account to the insurances there are two type of insurances like travel and health insurance just briefly give us an idea what a travel insurance is and then what a health insurance is and when we need travel insurance and when we need health insurance yeah okay um the travel insurance is a little bit of misunderstood um product actually so in germany anyone who comes to germany or who lives in germany must have a proper protection of their health so they need to have a proper health insurance and for the tourists you know so the government expects you need to have a protection while you are traveling because you are only here temporary yeah so this is the travel health insurance but normally we call it as travel insurance you know if you go to an agent travel agent they think the travel insurance is to protect your baggage you know but the travel insurance what we use here is the travel health insurance okay. this is what the embassies and consulates want you to have because after you reach the airport you are traveling you get fever you need to go to the doctor or you fell down ribs broken or hand broken can anything can happen right so to protect that the customer or anyone who apply for a german visa tourist student anyone should have that that's why you see this as a requirement at the embassy and the minimum coverage should be 30000 euros so the coverage should be minimum 30000 so this is the the travel health insurance so this is for the students they need this till the semester starts okay. because the other insurance comes into the game because then you become a resident and to live here the travel insurance is not sufficient because it's only for the emergency medical treatment so this is where the proper health insurance comes in so for the university students something called public health insurance so this kicks in when the semester starts so the travel insurance is valid till you become a student and then you become a student then you need the health insurance okay. this is the full health insurance let's say okay so one question just uh, frankly that people something sometimes think that they're paying like 120 something euros and they feel like it's the waste of money from the countries where we come it's not so common to have health insurances there so it feels like sometimes that if you're paying 120 euros and you're not getting sick for like 2 years and you feel like i'm wasting a lot of money i mean is it really useful or it's a waste of money i mean okay so to to, to make you feel better <laughs> let's look into uh, the one who is working you know so as a student 100 euros and in my time it was like 50 euros something now it's keep on going uh with the recent change it's around 120 i also feel it's too much for the student but that's how it is next to the rent insurance is the biggest expense for anyone but if you start working you are paying 15.5% of your salary into the health insurance okay. <laughs> yeah so that's this is like so that's why the students are happy they pay less relative to you know so you pay half the employer pays half but still you pay 7.7% of your monthly salary towards the the insurance system but on the other side luckily in the last 20 years i didn't had any major issue but i have been also paying a lot 
I had the same feeling, hey, so I'm 25, like, why should I need this, you know? But I have also seen some of my friends who met with some accidents, one who had a heart surgery, because you, you never know. Yeah. And someone, they had like a chronic disease back home, but they were not treated properly. So they also end up staying in hospitals for like two weeks. Someone is still going like like month, you know, and then stayed there because of a bigger treatment, but they also didn't pay anything. Yeah, that's, I mean, this, this, these are the cases when you look into these cases, then you feel like, okay, 120 euros are not enough. Uh, I mean, not too much. Uh, I, I also know some of the cases. One of my friend, uh, his leg got broken uh, two months back. His, I mean, we hope that nothing, these things does not happen to any of us. But, I mean, it's life. The things can happen. And the guy who broke his leg, all of his uh, medical expenses, it was bared by his uh, health provider. Uh, one of my friend, he got a kidney stone and he didn't have to pay anything. I also got my wisdom tooth re removed a uh, couple of months back and it was all free. I mean, if you're healthy, everything is going fine. But still, in some point in life, you can face something and you're far away from your home. You don't have your family here who can take care of you. And I mean, you are on your own, kind of. So it's good to have a health insurance. First of all, we don't have any choice, right? We have to take it. But even if we are paying for the health insurance, we don't have to feel bad about it because at some point it can help us. And the guys who are paying this and they're they're not getting sick, that's good. But you can keep you, uh, going to the doctor and do your regular checkups uh, just in case you uh, have anything inside your body. So just uh, do your regular checkups here. So uh, I heard that the travel insurance from Coracle is free. Is it the case that the Coracle is providing free travel insurance? Yes. Um, yeah. So it has a story history to it as well. And we were the first to introduce that really free. Travel insurance is, they need it anyway. You know, it doesn't matter wherever you are from. Yep. And then we made a deal with our insurance partners here. So we said, okay, you know what? If you apply the health insurance, you get the travel insurance for free as a bonus to sign up. Mm. And that went like viral. Yeah, I remember back in my time, I also took this free travel insurance from Coracle. Uh, I think the only thing is then you have to also take the health insurance uh, with it because the Coracle is paying for your travel insurance and then they want to also give you health insurance so they can balance it out some uh, in some manner. But it's good because when I was looking into the market at that time, two and a half years back, so I was getting different uh, uh, providers and they were charging me. So nothing was free. So, I mean, you have to take both. It's not an option. So you have to take travel insurance and you have to take health insurance. So rather than paying for both, if you are getting a deal where you don't have to pay for one thing, I think it's a good deal. Uh, I, I did it like this and I mean, you can also do it like that. So, uh, one question is how many health insurance providers are on the panel of Coracle? I mean, if I want a specific health provider, is it possible or you just offer one? Okay. Uh, this also addressing one of your earlier questions, how we are different. You know, uh, if we had our marketing team here, they would be like playing all the differences at once. No, I'm, I'm using this right moment. We are the only provider out there in the market okay. who offers multiple health insurances, so options for different health insurances. So in Germany, there are literally 100 public health insurances. So, but for the international insurance market, it's there are like few brands that are quite established, you know. And TK, that's well known for most of the students. And AOK, which is also quite familiar. And Barmer, they're all the, I think the third, second biggest in Germany. So we said, you know what, in some regions, some insurance companies, they have a really huge presence. And they also have a fair little bit attractive pricing, you know, for eastern parts of Germany, some insurance companies, they are quite stronger, and some universities have an office of an insurance company located there. So um, so we said, you know what, we wanted to stay neutral, give this choice is, we think is the choice is the freedom. So they choose what they want. And then sometimes they take TK, but they go to Germany and then they say, you know what, here I have a separate other insurance company so they can also change. Oh, okay. With other providers, if you take one and get a package and then if you go to Germany and then say, you know what, I don't want this insurance, but then your deal is 
like it's broken. Yeah. Then you need to pay back for the travel insurance. You need to pay back for the benefit that you received. So with Coracle, you have this flexibility of moving. And we offer all the top three biggest insurances in Germany. Now, the, one of the most important question which I face, what are the different type of health insurance? I mean, uh, is there different health insurance for under or over 30 years of age? How does it work? Okay. Um, so let's go back to this travel insurance for a bit. So you travel to Germany with a travel insurance, right? And then you become a resident, you start living. Either you go to the university for bachelor's, master's, whatever, or there are a lot of students coming also for, to learn the language. You know, they come to Germany for six months to learn the language, and then someone who finishes the school, they cannot go directly into the university for bachelor's, so they need to do the bridge course. We call it like Studienkolleg in German. So there are like these two parts. If you go directly to the university or you go to the Studienkolleg or language course. The public insurance companies, they offer the insurance only for the university students. Okay. So if you are a language course or if you are going to a student college, you are not able to take that. So that's the the two different parts. You cannot come to the public insurance. And the restrictions doesn't stop there. And if you are above 30 and did not have any health insurance in Germany before, which is normally the case, then the public insurance also does not take you in into the public system. Okay. So if you are above 30, or if you are coming for the language school or for the preparatory course, then you take the second path for the private insurance. Okay. And the private insurance being the privately managed, then it's like it depends on how much you pay, the benefits you get back. Okay. So there are like the ones that are cheaper, then the coverage is not good. The good coverage can go up to 200 euros a month. You know, it's not like then the public looks cheaper yeah. you know, for the similar coverage. And what are the future goals of Corica? Focusing mainly on improving the user experience and the support. So this is the core focus, uh, you know, also for us now. And um, by the time we release the video or soon after the video, so we will have the, the dashboard ready. Oh. We will have um, a dashboard where the, the students have a lot more um, control. For example, changing a travel date. I'm changing my monthly amount or whatever so they can do it on their own and some things can do it instantly even though we are much faster giving the travel insurance getting it right away it's the the most fastest way so that's where we are working on this great news uh, I have not seen the dashboard uh, because it's not published as Sammy told but, but when it will be published uh, I would love to see it and I would love to show it to the people I think it's we are the first one talking about this, I think. Yeah, this is the first one I'm pop talking publicly, yes. <laughs> so, Semi has told us publicly the first time on any video about their dashboard and their project, what we are doing. It will be uh, good for the students because currently when you apply for the travel insurance, you have to specify the date. I will travel on this date. Yeah. And then if you want to change the date, of course, you then need to contact the customer uh, service. Because you don't know when you are going to get the visa. It can delay, uh, the dates can change. So it would be great help if you can just go directly to your dashboard and change your travel date. And just like this, you can change the dates in your travel uh, certificate or travel insurance. And we have one feature that's specifically built for Pakistan. I oh. uh, just wanted to keep it surprised till we uh, launch it. This is mainly thought for Pakistan ah. and you will see once we have it um, online. So now I am also curious about what uh, what the curriculum is going to launch which is specifically for Pakistan. So uh, great, great that you are thinking about a specific uh, audience uh, which is Pakistani like us. So one last question before we wind up that when I was about to open my blog account I heard that Coracle is not opening a block account on a person's name. For example, if my account will be opened, so it will not be on my name, it will be on someone else's name. Is it the case right now? Uh, no. Oh. So the short answer is no. But it used to be, as you said. Uh -huh. you know? And since last year, the blocked accounts are being opened on the student's name. So, But still, because of the previous knowledge, and if you talk to someone who came to Germany three years back, then they know they are what they did, and this is causing some con con misunderstanding. But just to bring the matter to <laughs> to an end, um, so the, all the blocked accounts um, since last year 
um, are open on the student's name with the Gemini ban. So uh, if there are any informations going around, it's not um, um, yeah, it's not okay. valid anymore. Okay. Yeah, that's great. And yeah, it was nice talking with you, Sami. Thanks for your time. And it felt like I am talking with some colleague. Uh, it didn't feel like that I am talking with uh, a CEO of any company. He's, he's, he's such a nice and nice guy. And we talked in a very frank manner. I hope you got some information and you got answers to a lot of your questions. And yep, see you in another video. Thank you, Sami. Yeah, thank you for uh, having me.